Hey, if you're new here but enjoying the content, join us. Subscribe now and ring that bell for notifications. All right. Hey, it's Comic Artist Pro Secrets. You are listening to Ethan Van Skyver, 26-year veteran of the comic book industry, 20 years of which were spent working at this company here, DC Comics. World's most charming, elegant, eloquent, uh, effervescent, handsome, and charming man, uh, Comics Gate in a nutshell, as Mags Visaggio uh, once said about me. And, and she couldn't have been more right. Comics Gate in a nutshell. Proud to say so. Look at this article uh, in The Hollywood Reporter today. DC Comics is laying off 3% of its workforce. Uh, by workforce, incidentally, uh, one assumes they don't mean creative talent, even though that is implicit. That's going to happen as well. Uh, DC Comics, as I reported the other day, uh, actually cut their uh, publishing line back to 52 comics uh, per month, which is, uh, well, uh, they've, they've often published twice as many uh, comics as that per month. So DC Comics is taking out the scissors and trimming the fat, unfortunately. And in, in this case here, cutting off their workforce means their uh, office and their, their editorial staff, um, th this is not so easy to do for them. And uh, let's, let's take a look at this here. Uh, this is very unfortunate. Uh, seven, wow, to, to have your artwork associated with this article, poor Ivan. Uh, seven of the company's 240 employees uh, are believed to be affected. So it's just seven people uh, on the staff that have been there forever. I mean, you know, these people, when, when I read the names, I was like, no, no. Uh, DC is laying off staff as part of an organization uh, structure, uh, restructure of the Warner Brothers division that will see its focus on the original core business of publishing, The Hollywood Reporter has confirmed. Uh, it is believed that seven employees, around 3% of DC's 240-person workforce, have been impacted. That's just the start. I'm afraid that's, this is just the beginning. Uh, layoffs at DC, a subsidiary of Warner Brothers, include high-level figures, including senior VP sales, trade marketing, John Cunningham. I, I don't even believe it. I can't. I can't believe they're cutting John Cunningham loose. That that just, that just absolutely destroys me. Uh, VP Consumer Marketing, Eddie Scannell. I don't think I ever met him. Uh, but here's the big one as far as I'm concerned. Senior VP Art Director, Mark Chiarello. Um, Mark Chiarello. Um, how can I put this? Very, very well-respected um, art director. Uh, an artist himself. Somebody who worked well with, with the geniuses of comic book art like Adam Hughes. Um, a guy who, whose knowledge, I, I don't, I don't think he's replaceable. I, I, I can't, I don't know what, I don't know how you find someone like Mark Chiarello. Who do you replace Mark Chiarello with? Uh, this is really uh, terrifying news. I was expecting to read names that, um, and by the way, this is just three of the seven people. I don't think they're listing uh, the other four. I, I don't know who they are. I'm, I'm afraid to find out. Uh, but Mark Chiarello and um, John Cunningham, and I'm only saying, I'm, I'm not listing Eddie Scannell because I never met him, or is that Eddie Scannell? I, I don't know. Um, but these two, these are a gut punch. These are devastating. These are big, beloved uh, figures that have been running DC and, and, and have, done, have been responsible for some of the very best of DC Comics uh, in the 20 years that I worked there. Uh, so I'm shocked by all of this. Uh, rumors about changes at the company, uh, home to DC, Vertigo, and Mad Brands, uh, have been circulating since Wednesday afternoon, helped by early unsubstantiated reports, uh, that's a bleeding cool, Rich Johnson, uh, that speculated that DC publishers Dan DiDio and Jim Lee could be among those leaving the company. Uh, yeah, you wish, uh, you wish Rich Johnson. Rich Johnson has been waiting for Dan DiDio uh, to, to get whacked for the longest time. Um, he really has. I mean, he used to publish articles about him all the time. Uh, that is not the case uh, with both actively continuing in their current positions. That's oh, the day these two guys leave. That's the day that DC dies. Uh, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Now, I, I don't always agree with uh, with with Dan DiDio and his creative choices, but uh, he has um, oh, man, he's kept DC Comics afloat and strong for uh, since 2003. So I, I can't imagine him going anywhere. Uh, the company has been organized into three distinct er areas as of Wednesday's news. Editorial, uh, which will continue to be overseen by Editor-in-Chief Bob Harris. You know, Bob Harris is Editor-in-Chief, but I never, you know, when I worked there, I never went through him to get anything done. I always went straight to Dan DiDio. I'd say, if I wanted something uh, to happen, I I'd go to Dan DiDio, and I, you know, I still would. 
um, production and manufacturing, which remains under the purview of Senior VP Manufacturing and Operations, Allison Gill, and the newly created Publishing Support Services, which will handle sales, marketing, promotion. All right, so that's uh, DC veteran Hank Canals, uh, who came over with Jim Lee from Wildstorm. Uh, Hank Canals was a big part of the image movement um, back in the 90s. Uh, all right, DC Collectibles, the merchandising arm of the company, w will be moved under Warner Brothers Consumer Products toy team. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, so there will be no more DC Direct. It's all going to be um, Warner Brothers. Uh, this move comes on the same day as a reorganizing re reorganization of Warner Brothers Consumer Products, in which 10% of staff will be laid off, uh, sources say. This is all... <clears throat> all right, let me... Before I say that, let me let me read this uh, paragraph here, and then we'll make this clear. DC moved its publishing operations from New York to Burbank in 2015. And that, by the way, was a huge move. Um, a lot of people got left behind uh, when DC moved to Burbank. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of great editors, a lot of great staff. Um, they didn't. They opted not to come or weren't invited to come um, from New York to Burbank. Uh, the past year has included big behind-the-scenes moves, including Diane Nelson stepping down in June. Um, yes, yeah, stepping down in quotes. Uh, as president of DC Entertainment uh, and Warner Brothers Consumer Products after 22 years with the company. A week later, Jeff Johns exited as DC president and chief creative officer. I I've worked with Jeff Johns since 1999. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Jeff really like uh, rocketed to the top. Um, he knew it. The thing about Jeff uh, is that he has read every, he's read everything. Like uh, Jeff, he, he's like, uh, here's the thing about Jeff Johns. How, wh who do you replace him with? It's the same as Mark Chiarello. Who the hell do you replace these guys with? Uh, these guys are practically savants. Jeff knows everything about DC Comics. He's read everything. Uh, I, I I don't know who you and he can and obviously he can write. So I, I don't know who you who you install in his stead. Um, in September, DC launched a streaming service, DC Universe. Uh, DC representative has declined to comment. Um, all right, and so there's a new. Um, uh, here's a uh, Pam Lifford here. Uh, sent out this message to kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, let all of its employees know exactly what, what this batch of changes will entail. Why is this happening? Um, it's happening because of the Justice League movie. That's what it is. Uh, the Justice League movie was a catastrophic uh, disaster for Warner Brothers and for DC, um, for the DCEU. Uh, what happened was it was underway with a $350 million budget under Zack Snyder. Um, and Zack Snyder had a family uh, crisis, okay? And some of you know what that is. And it's completely uh, understandable uh, that he exited from the, from the movie and couldn't finish it. Uh, the movie still needed to be completed. This represented a significant, an enormous investment, uh, as these films do. And um, decisions were made to have Joss Whedon, uh, this guy, uh, come in and finish the movie. Joss Whedon didn't like what he saw, apparently, and asked for uh, close to $300 million. From what I've heard, if you know, if you have better information about this, uh, let me know. But he, he basically asked for uh, an enormous, almost almost equal to the original production budget uh, to, to reshoot uh, and to uh, finish Justice League, uh, the Zack Snyder uh, movie. Uh, and he made it into something else. Uh, the movie was a catastrophe. And it was an expensive catastrophe, and it lost an awful lot of money. I mean, you have to understand, you have to imagine what losing, I mean, what spending close to $700 million on a movie and then, and losing hundreds of million dollars on a movie can do to people, can do to their jobs. Um, shortly uh, after, uh, Diane took a break. Uh, Diane never came back. She announced she was staying gone. Jeff Johns, I think, also uh, took some of the blame uh, for the Justice League movie, and he lost his position there. Uh, others uh, at DC um, have uh, who were involved with the Justice League movie also uh, lost their jobs, lost their positions, uh, and you know, um, it's the 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 effects are still rippling. You know, all of this, uh, all of this is 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 terrible because the comic books don't make money. The comic books are a loss leader. Uh, for Warner Brothers and DC, uh, but certainly uh, these characters in film and video games should be a cash cow. Uh, so for a movie that was supposed to launch uh, a million other movies, 
you know, uh, to actually become a box office failure. Uh, it was absolutely devastating, and and I think DC Comics is still reeling from that. So that, on top of the fact that the comic book industry is collapsing under um, uh, the weight of apathy uh, at this point, uh, you know, in 2016 there were 2,306 comic book stores. Now there are 1,900 uh, comic book stores are closing down and going out of business at a startling uh, and frightening rate. Uh, once once we reach the critical mass of 1,500 retailers for companies like DC and Marvel to uh, to solicit their product to, uh, it will no longer be viable. And all during um, this collapse, DC and Marvel have employed uh, price hikes. They've employed various uh, gimmick scams, uh, and I mean, I call them scams. That's what I think they are. I think you know a retailer's job is to look at the product that they're being offered. And then kind of decide based on what they know about their customer base, uh, you know, the people who come into their store and what they buy, how many copies of each one of these comic books that they should provide on their stands for complete sell through. Uh, nobody wants to be stuck with this product. Um, you know, two weeks after its date, it's gone cold. At this point, comics are like bread, uh, they have a sell by date and they go stale, and people do not buy them when they go stale. Uh, that is the situation with comics now. On top of this, um, po you know, politics uh, within the comics, divisive politics, uh, and uh, enormous, uh, unnecessary, um, uh, you know, I don't know, events. You know, these silly events, like, hey, this is Civil War Three, and there are you know, twelve hundred little spinoff books that aren't necessary to read, and. It's just too much, and so foot foot traffic has declined in these stores. Uh, retailers are uh, considering what DC and Marvel are doing uh, as predatory publishing. It is a problem for them to uh, be able to gauge how to responsibly um, run their own businesses when Marvel and DC are employing tricks like this. Uh, it's catastrophic. Uh, this is Comicsgate, uh, and and as much as anti comic skaters within the comic book industry uh, would like to marginalize our voices and um, and let people know gaslight people that we're wrong and we're crazy and that all this stuff and you know the, the comic book industry is is healthy and will survive forever and this is just a temporary setback I, I don't think so I, I don't think so I think this is uh, I've been through two different comic book crashes and never felt the way I feel now. I've never seen things uh, as so very, very, very bleak. And those crashes, like the one in 1998, uh, the lowest selling book was like the highest selling book today at that point. when we And at that point, we thought that was extinction. We thought the comic book industry was going to go extinct. So, um, yeah, that's that's what's going on. And and here's the first, here's, well, here's another bit of news. DC cut their line down to 52 comics. Uh, obviously, talent is going to get cut as well. Uh, and they're laying off uh, seven employees that they're talking about today. I'm sure more fat trimming will be coming. Uh, they probably just don't want, you know... Uh, a bloodbath, you know, all at once. So we're gonna we're gonna see this get uh, whittled down. I'll report on it, even though it's you know making videos. Uh, this is this is the thing about YouTube. It's like I, I want to make videos that people want to watch. The YouTube game is about creating interesting content that gets people to click on it. And if the comic book industry itself isn't attracting any interest from fans and readers, uh, why would I think that videos about comic books and the decline of the comic book industry uh, would be attractive? Uh, nevertheless, um, I feel like I need to tell you guys this. Uh, bad times. Uh, bad times ahead for comics. Uh, great times ahead for us, Comicsgate, and people who venture out on their own independently. Hey, want to follow me on Twitter? Okay, cool. I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. Talk to you there. Join the fandom menace and execute your own Order 66 with our incredible line of t-shirts, Soy Low, A Soy Wars Story, Tico, A Soy Wars Story, and our brand new smoking hot Soy Wars Plan 9. Make a statement today. This is the only trilogy you'll ever need. The link is below in the description. If you enjoyed this video and want to become part of this community, subscribe to this channel by clicking the Laughing Man Face logo right on your screen. Ring the bell for notifications as well. You'll never miss a live chat. And stay tuned, another video by Comic Artist Pro Secrets is coming right up.